So I've got three questions um, for Bill and Robin. We'll go through fairly quickly because I want to leave time for questions at the end and a mystery exercise. So first question for, for, for both of you. Robin, um, I'm curious how you got into this work and, and how the way that you got into this work has affected the way that you do the work that you're doing uh, at the moment with Stories in Action. Right. So I'm a little bit nervous, I have to say, and just forgot something there, so I'm just going to backtrack. So, um, kia ora, bula, malo e lele, talofa. And I say that because I just wanted to acknowledge everybody's contribution. And yesterday I was so excited about Sean and Sarah, who sort of said to come from a Pacific Island yeah, kind of perspective. So I'm taking that on right now. <laughs> um, so... How I got into this was I, I was a teacher and I've been a teacher like probably since I you know, graduated and I kind of didn't know that I was really going to do that and I didn't really choose it. I just thought it was going to be a pathway and that I'd do something better later actually and so I did, pri you know, I was a primary school trained teacher and then I went on and did a degree and then I went into um, tertiary um, and, you know, and I taught at all levels. And then I sort of thought, well, you know, you're kind of hemmed in, and I kind of decided that, the, and I had this wonderful job for some of the time, actually going around schools, and I really loved it. So I went into schools, and I saw what the programs they were running, and that was what gave me the inspiration, and I thought, why not do something different? So that was when I started. I was a phys ed teacher, so I danced the Olympic Games and danced the Rugby World Cup. Wasn't a scholar at school. You know, my hus husband claims that at university I got straight C's and just got enough to get by. But the point was, was that I really, yeah, what really did happen was that I sort of um, had this love for, I suppose, sport and, you know, games and Rugby World Cup and all of that, and that went really well. And then I just suddenly, we went to a talk with Robert Swan and about the Antarctica, both Bill and I went, and he's the only guy to have walked both poles, and he, I just stopped dead in my tracks. I just thought, you know, we've got to do something with the environment. So that was it. Moved to tears about that. <laughs> that truth that came out yesterday. And so I decided, well, let's do something. So that was when I thought, let's work with young people and let's, you know, go into schools. And so that was it. So really, that was the, how I got to be what I do. And I've, I've created stories in action. And what I do is I create stories collaboratively with classes. So with, it's in the junior classes, it's um, with 20 kids or 30 kids, how many there are at a kindy, and in schools, it's two classes at a time. And then the other thing I do is just play. Like, that's the only, like I just play in the moment with everything. Fantastic. And I think you've got some images to share with us of Stories oh, yeah, in Action. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, can we bring those up, please? So what we do is, I've just given you, because of the time, I've just given you what, what we came up with at Dovedale School, and this is a part of the story. So you'll see that um, I create the story and then they have another finish. So what they did was they um, got the um, fisherman out of the boat because he'd he was in fishing in a marine reserve and tipped him overboard. And you can see that there were scientists at the bottom of the, um, of the um, ocean. They were doing some studies and they thought, oh, there's a fisherman going by, better do something. And so they brought him into the submarine and they revived him with some eels. <laughs> Pretty amazing stuff. And then they brought him up onto the beach and said, you realise you were fishing in a marine reserve? And then I just love the next slide, which just says a hat was floating away. So I just play with what they come up with. And the rest of the story was, you know, so that's that. And then this was another story I did about Rotorua Island. So what happened with Rotorua Island, it's up in the Hauraki Gulf. It's um, a sanctuary, which, you know, we take animals from the mainland and take them um, to Rotorua Island. And, yeah, so then what they had to do is we, what happened to the animals once they got to the island. So these are shore skinks, so they were drawing um, what they thought they would come up with. And this, this slide on the other side, you'll get to have a play with us if we've got a bit of time. I've just got a few resources because in order to make up a story, you've got to have some resources to do that. So um, that's that. And then this is what she came up with. She said that you put them into a hotel. You go, there's four different layers and um, there's a little acorn there as well. 
and, you know, they could go out in case they see the stoat. And, uh, you know, it's very secure and very much like home. But this was their creation that they came up with. And then this other person, you know, just one little slide about, you know, this is all perfect. You know, we've got the green, the trees, you know, perfect life. Beautiful. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, give it up. I like cryptic stories too. Bill, um, tell us what you're doing before the, before next, and and how it's informed the way that you think about that project. Yeah. Okay. And and to um, and well, and maybe start at the end. I mean, I'm uh, I'm involved with a philanthropic organisation called Next, which is involved in environment and education. So I think the reason that uh, Yosef uh, asked us to come up here was we're we're both involved in environmental education. And as Robin pointed out to me, I've only been involved with Next for a year and a half or so. And she pointed out to me when I, uh, when I came home and said I was joining Next that I was following her in her footsteps in terms of the environmental education. And that's, the, that is, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, you know, true and, and based on fact. And it's uh, one of the nice things for us is that we've both got very much an interest in that. But, but our backgrounds uh, and, our, and our careers up to then have been very different. Uh, mine... Uh, mine prior to Next was for 20 years really an investment with a, a company uh, called Direct Capital that's involved in private company investment and private equity. And so many people viewed the change from, uh, from uh, Direct Capital to uh, Next as being um, uh, a 180 degree change of direction. Uh, I th it is in the sense of uh, going from financial returns to uh, ecological and educational returns, but in other respects, uh, uh, you know, I talk to it as more of a 30 degree change of direction because the way that uh, Next is operating and f for my good fortune what the board of Next were looking for was somebody who had uh, investment and, um, and business uh, background and that is the sort of approach that we bring to making the grants that we are making in Next Foundation. So. Uh, you know, I understand when people sit and look at my previous background and say, well, you seem to have jumped across the ditch, but I, I, I don't view it that way. I've, and uh, I've, I view it as great good fortune, actually, that the board was looking for somebody with that background when they were, uh, when they were sitting next up. And when you, then you've been in the job 18 months, as I understand it. You've had a bit of a chance to look around at what's happening in New Zealand. Where are you seeing the really high potential areas uh, in the education space at the moment? Yeah, and, uh, um, well, let me preface that with the fact that you, what you've said is 18 months, so I am uh, no expert. I, well, it wasn't a complete... I, I, I did actually have a year teaching myself in one of my first careers, and uh, I come from a family of of teachers and educators, and I married an educator, so uh, it's not a completely foreign uh, space to me, and it's one I'd always been interested in, and part of the reason, and, and part of the answer to your question, Billy, is uh, I had the view that, um, that technology is just radically changing education and going to, and we're only at the beginning of the road in terms of that. Uh, uh, there, and um, so it was an area that I thought was uh, was really interesting, and it's one of the areas that at Next we are looking to get engaged in is is uh, is how technology is having an impact on education. And one of the programs we're supporting, for example, is a digital literacy program for teachers here in New Zealand because our uh, initial teacher education and our teacher training in New Zealand that goes on at the moment doesn't have any digital education component at all, which is amazing uh, and is going to change. Uh, but an organisation called the Mind Lab is doing something about that now and, uh, and we're proud to be supporting them. So, you know, the, where do we see... Uh, the? One of the questions we ask ourselves at Next is what are we bringing to the table in an education sense other than the obvious one of, uh, of funding? And our answer to that question is, is, is based in our business-like background and in many ways around things like execution and project management and those skills. And in an educational context, I think there's a lot of things that can be taken out of business that can be brought to educational initiatives uh, that, uh, that, that, that can really make a difference. And if I give you one, ex one example of, 
of a, of a conversation that's going on now, not a, not a group we've made a commitment to yet, but we, in our, in our, uh, we had three applications last year from, from uh, uh, teaching programs, which were all had a similar philosophy, if I call it a learning to learn sort of philosophy, all independent, um, all in, a, in initial stages in New Zealand, one's in 20 schools, one's in half a dozen, one's an offshore program that had been that had been uh, given to about 400 teachers here in New Zealand, but all really in their fledgling stage. But when we received the three applications, we said actually all three of them are, have got the same challenge around scaling up and execution, and all three really led by educational visionaries who didn't have that capability. So we're in a conversation with the three of them about whether or not we can support them via a, a, what we're calling us. A, 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 an ex, a scaling accelerator which will help the three of them go from this, the initial stage that they're at now to a much greater scale and in, in a New Zealand context. And if they can be proven and do that in a powerful way, um, and we have a powerful conversation with the Ministry of Education, then over time it might be something that the Ministry of Education might pick up and, and take to a national level. So. Where I see we can make a difference with in education is helping uh, the development end of the research and development uh, phase uh, de uh, happen. Ministries, government departments aren't really set up for that. They're not allowed to make mistakes. They're not generally uh, they're not they're not allowed they're not generally attracting people who have got that sort of capability and expertise. So that's something that we see we can help with outside the system. Um, while talking, while working with the system. Fantastic, thanks, Bill. Uh, Robin, what's what's exciting you at the moment about this space? What, where, where are you seeing your work taking you in the in the yeah. next few years? Okay, so I think the thing is, is that what excites me about this whole young people thing is that they actually learn and they don't realise that they're learning. So what's happening is that they learn ecology, they learn literacy, they learn te reo, and theatre work. I'm really big on theatre work. I've just recently done some post-grad work and working towards a master's at the moment. And I've transferred from physical education into drama. And one of the things, the reason why, is because I think, you know, drama teachers traditionally have had it that, you know, we can't do drama. And all teachers, we just don't want to go there. But it's just so easy. So I think that's really what I'm... I'm such a drama queen. But, you know, I mean... <laughs> Really, that is, you know, I, I just want to make it easy for teachers and that's the direction I want to go and then also have it fun for the young people. And I just think the other thing is just, just really love the young people. I mean, there is something else possible, as you said, Billy. You know, really, there is, and that's what I'm after. Okay, so I'm seeing a picture uh, of build, growing momentum. I feel like there's a bunch of good initiatives around the country. I think the work that Next is doing, getting in behind people, certainly the support that I've been lucky to receive um, with projects I've been involved in, uh, the work that New Frontiers and Kiwi Connect is doing. How do we build on this momentum going forward? Where are you seeing the blocks? And how do we sidestep them or roll over them or start another conversation? Um, I, I think, uh, oh, not a block, but something to always have top of mind um, in, in dealing with um, it, it, in, in the area of education. Um, it, um, multidisciplinary and um, educational norms don't go together naturally. Uh, and I think, you know, it's one of the great powers of, of uh, new, new Frontiers, and one of the things I think we all appreciate about it is it's multidisciplinary and it's bringing people from uh, different applications. And, uh, and so many of the people who are up here on stage over the time that I've been here are really uh, you know, drawing on a whole lot of different inputs in terms of whatever they're, they're bringing out. And that's not something that uh, educational institutions are that well set up to deliver. Uh, and so, you know, that's something that I think uh, we are, um, you know, as a, as a philanthropic organisation that's sitting outside the education system and without the sort of um, requirements that a ministry has of having to take a whole-of-nation approach and, and 
not make mistakes and be worried about what's going to turn up in the paper. Uh, with not ha you know, we're we're in a very fortunate position in in terms of being able to draw on a number of different sources for and to support organisations that are that are doing things. So, I do see that uh, and and Dev Academy and Inspiral and uh, the things that are going on there, you know, are a fantastic example of of that. I think you. You know, you're doing that and you are really delivering there a new model of education. A lot of what we're doing, we're supporting things like uh, professional leadership development for teachers, digital literacy for teachers, um, a, a, an initiative across this, the district of Rotorua, which is about collaboration between the 50 schools in Rotorua. We're supporting things that we see as being um, areas of need in a New Zealand context as opposed to new models of education. I'd, I'd call them improvements uh, in terms of the model. Things like Dev Academy are drawing on that multidisciplinary base and coming up with new models which I've, I very much think are the future. Robin, where are you, where, how do you think we build from here? For, for stories in action. Yeah. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, and I'm actually now producing four books from different eco four ecosystems. So then I've got a, you know, there's a plate to work from, a platform to work from, and then the young people can then finish the stories. They can pull the story apart, and you know, work with artists. And oh, this is what I'm going to show you, just on my thing here. So this is a, an impression of a New Zealand scene, you know, with um, an artist that's put in the river and, you know, and then the kids, the young people can put in the animals. So um, I, I really want also um, technology to be part of Stories in Action. So I really want the young people to actually start creating pictures like this. And this is the artist that we're using, Laurie Davis from Nelson. And I love the way that she's done all those creatures. And then this is the tui that she's um, done for me and the tuatara. But the young people can put those in the stories and then they can start, as you saw in that earlier one, that they can use their own as well. And that's, that's just the resource that you might use work with later. So look, just build more resources and uh, really have the young people be really interactive programs and have them run the show. That's it. And just love them. <laughs>